some of the families are out. But praise God, they're in. I want to thank you once again for our recently uh, concluded uh, corporate prayer and fasting. I felt that uh, that meeting was very powerful and very uh, honoring to God and very uh, unselfish praying for other people. Hallelujah. I was, uh, I was uh, touched uh, with what Eunice said when she was about to pray, when she said that uh, many times, especially with the missions, we only talk about numbers, 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 how much, how much, how much, when what they really need is prayer. So on top of what we are doing, I believe that let us level up to a point where we will not only commit our resources to the missions, but at the same time, our resources in time, dedicating in prayer and intercession for these people. Hallelujah. Amen. For the beloved of God. Thank you, Lord. Now, uh, are you ready to receive the word of God this morning? Amen. Amen. Praise God. So, 2018 is the year of? Hope. 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 2018 is a year of? Hope! 2018 is a year of? Hope! Yung kunyari, 2018 is a year of? Hope! Amen. Thank you, Lord. So, let us continue to proclaim that 2018 is the year of hope. And last week, we started with letter H. And uh, we talk about hearing from God. Amen? Did you enjoy that? Amen. That the first essential element to make 2018 as the year of hope is very important to hear from God. Hearing from God to give us direction and guidance. Hearing from God what to do and what not to do. So I believe that we have covered that topic extensively last week. And this morning, let me share to you, I believe this is a shorter message, but powerful in a way. And we go to letter O with the word hope. And with this, let me discuss with you today the second element, essential element to make 2018 the year of hope. And that is number two, overcome overcoming. Let us bow our heads and let us pray. Father, to the overcomers, we pray that you cause us to listen that we may not only hear, but we may experience how is it to be overcomers. Let your Holy Spirit teach us in a way that it will reach not only our mind, but it will reach down to our heart where conviction starts and change happens. Lord, we thank you. We allow your Holy Spirit to be our teacher, as always, and we do not take any credit aside from being recipients of your grace and your mercies. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Overcoming. Many times you have seen and listened to Christians say, Oh, I'm just passing through. Diba? Sa Tagalog pa, minsan maritin ko sila, meron lang akong pinagdadaanan. Diba? Right? And in the midst of pinagdadaanan, you see them uh, kind of uh, sad, kind of weak, you know, and they will say, oh, it will pass by, it will pass through, I'm just passing through. Now, this message is more than just passing through, it is overcoming. I believe that God had promised us with lots of promises in the Bible, not only to pass through life, not only to pass through difficult situations, but to overcome them. Hello? Hello. Amen. Hello. Yeah. Because passing through is different from overcoming. Passing through is just, oh, let it just pass by. I will yeah. just be standing here still. And, you know. <coughs> now, overcoming is different. Overcoming is letting it pass through. But after it has passed through, you experience that level of victory and success. Amen. Hello? Amen. Huh? Amen? Amen? 
So we, the Bible didn't say that we are, the Christians are good over uh, passing overs. But the Bible says we are more than conquerors. Amen? Amen. So let me read passages of the scripture taken from uh, Romans chapter 8, beginning verse 31. It says, What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? That's a wonderful promise, right? <coughs> if God is for us, who can be against us? Meaning that, well, the devil is against us, but if God is for us, he's a lot mightier and powerful than whoever will be and is against us. Amen? And verse 32 is as powerful, one of my favorite verses, in, whenever I ask something very, very impossible from God. In verse 32, he said, He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he, how shall he not with himself also freely, everybody say freely, freely. with him also freely give us all things. Do you understand the magnitude of that promise? Do you understand how liberal and how restrictless is that promise? Sabi dyan, kung yung anak niya na, hindi siya nagkatubili ibigay sa iyo. Ano po ba, hindi niya pwedeng ibigay sa iyo. If he, he, if he did not withheld his son from us, and he gave his son liberally to us because of his love, listen to me, what more combined is bigger than Jesus Christ? If God the Father had given Jesus Christ to you, is the one or the thing you are asking bigger than Jesus Christ? What is that? New job? What is that? Healing? What is that? Uh, 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 boyfriend? Girlfriend? What is that? Money? Finances? If God the Father had given Jesus Christ to us freely, He did not spare Jesus to be given to us. He will not withhold anything from us. Amen. So, does that increase our faith? Does that, does that encourage us? Hello? No. Huh? Amen? Amen. Huh? So, verse 33, Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Next slide. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died and furthermore is also risen, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. Now verse 34 opens up, opens up a new revelation of the present day ministry of Jesus Christ. You know, while he's there now, where is Jesus presently now? At the right hand of God, right? And this verse says, he is making intercessions for us. He's praying to the Father for us. He's making intercession for us. <coughs> Verse 35. Who shall separate us from the love of God? Love of Christ. Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword as it is written for your sake we are killed all day long we are killed all day long we are accounted as sheep for the slaughter yet in all these things Paul said we are more than conquerors now that doesn't sound like just passing through that doesn't sound just like Letting pass by and doing nothing. Bible says 37, in all these things we are more than in some things, though, what? Small things? Bigger things? Things that we can handle? Or things that we cannot handle, maybe. But no. It says, in all of these things. It means that in all the things you're going through, let it not just pass through. Pass through it with victory and success.
success by being more than a conqueror, by being an overcomer. Amen. 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 That's the promise of God. Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. 38. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth nor any other created thing. <coughs> and name all of them. It shall not be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. No one. Tell your neighbor no one can separate you from God. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. It's a powerful words. Amen? Amen. No one can separate us from the love of God. Now I want to highlight a verse here. Next slide. When it says in 37, yet in all these things we are more than conquerors. Everybody say conquerors. Conquerors and overcomers. That is the O in the hope. Overcomers. Yet in all these things we are more than. We're not even conquerors. The Bible says we are even more, more, more than, more than. A conqueror through him who loved us. Now, let me teach you some Greek word. Next slide. The word conqueror is from a Greek word that says hupernikeo. Everybody say hupernikeo. Hupernikeo. I say kayo. So, who can Hooper for it? Hooper for it. Hooper Hooper. 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 Hooper Nikeo. That's our word for today. What is our word for today? Hooper Nikeo. You are a Hooper You are a Hooper We are a Hooper Nikeo. Hooper. It means we are more than conquerors. So never forget that word. Who are you? I'm a hoper. Hoper Nikeo. More than a conqueror. Next slide. Now, we claim to be overcomers. We claim to overcome. We claim to pass through it with flying colors. But what's our basis? Well, the basis is we overcome. We will overcome. <coughs> We will continue to overcome because Jesus had already overcome. Amen. If Jesus is dead, if Jesus is defeated, if Jesus did not rise from the dead, then there's no basis for us to overcome. We're all losers. Hello? And we're not losers, we're hopers. Hello? Amen. Tell your neighbor you're a hooper. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay? And also, what's our basis? When the Bible, if, 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 when, when the devil always asks us, what's your basis for overcoming? What's your basis for, for winning this battle? What's your basis for, for passing this battle with victory? Uh -huh. Jesus already overcome. My Lord overcome. And he even said after he was resurrected in Matthew 28 verse 18, all power is given unto me. In heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and make disciples of all nations. That's even the basis of the Great Commission. Because all power had been given to Jesus Christ. You know? And it says all, it says all. So Jesus claimed to have all power, so that is our basis. Now, in John 16, verse 33, this is what Jesus said. This things I have spoken to you that in me, Jesus said, you might have peace. In the world, you will have tribulation. Now, tribulation means hardship, difficulties, persecution. You know? No one are you saying that? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. In all these things, the things I've spoken to in me, you might have peace in the world. You will have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Amen. So every time the devil points at you and said, what's your basis of overcoming? My Jesus won. Yeah. 
When the devil reminds to you your past, remind him of his future. Because he will be doomed to hell. Amen? And remind him of what Jesus did to him too. Remember my Lord? Huh? <laughs> Paralyzed you according to Colossians 2.15. That is the basis of my victory. My claiming that I am an overcomer has a basis. And that is because my Jesus had won the battle. Je Jesus said, it is finished. <coughs> Petalestai, another Greek word, which means crossing the finish line with victory. Hooper Mikhail, more than a conqueror. So remember, we have a basis. It's not, it's not that we're talking basis here. We have a basis. Jesus won it. Jesus paid it off. Jesus received all of the power. I hope you're taking downloads on your smartphone because I see you holding your smartphones. Are you? Yes. Okay. Now, let me leave you some ways on how we can overcome. Next slide. How to overcome. How can we, how can we be an overcomer? Now, Pastor, if we overcome, overcome, what do we overcome? Difficult situations in our lives? Overcoming temptations? Hello? Huh? Overcoming loneliness? Overcoming, overcoming depression? Hello? It's a serious thing. Yeah. God expects us to be overcomers not only on a one-time basis, but God expects us to be overcomer, overcomers on a daily basis. Amen. Hello? We should live a life of overcomers, not only a moment of overcoming. Amen. Write that down. God expects us to live a life of overcomers, not only a moment of overcoming. Amen. Jesus paid it once for all. Once for all. Now, how do we start to overcome? How do we start to live a life of overcomers? It was, <coughs> it was start my mind. You lose in your mind, you lose in the physical. You lose with your mind, you lose in your situation. When you when in your mind you said you cannot do it. You cannot do it. Hello? It first all starts with the mind. That's why the mind is the background. The mind is the playground of the devil. So what do we do with our mind? Can we control our mind? Yes. You cannot control my mind. You cannot read my mind. But you can read your mind. You can control your mind. Hello? I can influence your mind. Some people can influence your mind. But to control what you want to think is up to you. So, victory starts, first of all, before in the physical realm, in the spiritual realm. <coughs> now, in the spiritual realm, Jesus had already won the battle. Pero in our mind, we might lose. Though Jesus had already won. Let us set our minds to think that we have the basis to overcome, basis to win. Let us think that we can do it. Then we can do it. Oh, so is that mind power? No, that's faith activating your mind. Faith activating your mind to believe what your heart already believed. So it all starts with the mind. Second Corinthians, how can we uh, read that in uh, <coughs> Second Corinthians chapter <coughs> 10 verse 5? Casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God bringing into captivity every thought. I, I'm uh, quoting from New King, I'm quoting from King James. This is New King James. 
bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Now, what is Paul saying here? You see, the devil will attempt all forms of whispers, careless whispers, <laughs> doubtful whispers, all forms of whispers in our mind. It's up to us to block it, reject it, put it under captivity. Put it under captivity. Don't even allow it. Don't entertain it. You know, I had to make a confession, and I believe this is the first time I'll make this confession. Are we recording? <laughs> you know my, I have, this is a public story, you know how, when I was born, I was supposed to be aborted, right? In my early teens, I already knew that story. My mom already told me about that story when I was a young boy. It stuck to my mind. And you know, when, when, when you reach the adolescent period of your life, you know, when you reach that year of puberty, 13, 14, 15, 16, yeah. When you are faced with the realities of life, when for the first time you're faced with difficulties and challenges and storms, you know how many times the devil had made a playground of my mind by telling me, Oh, because you're an accident. You're just a flip of history. You're not supposed really to be here. Remember? You're supposed to be aborted by your mom. You know how many times I have I have entertained that thought in my mind and because of that felt like a loser, although I'm very good looking. <laughs> <laughs> Third year, second year high school, third year high school, fourth year high school, and in high school you learn everything. The good, the bad, and the baddest. You know? <laughs> so, I have gone through some moments in my life beginning to entertain, to believe, and really believe that I'm not really supposed to be here. Parts of Suicide, the thoughts of ending my life. You know, young people, you you understand, right? You know? And it keeps on bombarding my mind until I reach the age 16 and 70. Praise God, 18. Another day in history came. May 29, 1982. I accepted the Lord in my heart as my Lord and Savior. Amen. I read the scriptures. Now, when the devil highlights that thing again that I'm not supposed to be here, when the devil begins to whisper again to me that, remember, you're supposed to be. Well, how can I do this candy while preaching? <laughs> wait, wait, because I'm, I'm about to say this point. When the devil now, after I become born again, when the devil starts to whisper to me, remember you're, you're not supposed to be here. Remember you're supposed to be aborted. Remember no one, no one wants you here. That's why all of these things are happening to you. After I got born again, that same history in my life became one of the greatest foundation in my life to serve the Lord. Why? Because I said, in my heart, the Holy Spirit now whispers to me. Last time when I was not born again, I cannot hear from the Holy Spirit because the line is cut. Remember? We don't have any relationship with God. We may be religious, but we're not righteous. The, the phone is cut every time we call. Eh, 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 eh. Busy. You know? But after I got born again, my communication to God was restored. Now, as a born-again Christian, we still hear two whispers in our ears. Whisper of the devil and whisper. Now we can hear whispers of the Holy Spirit. Those are the careful whispers. 
<laughs> Not anymore. Terry, let's see. Let's see. <laughs> So now, after I got born again, the Holy Spirit whispered to my ears and said, It is for a reason. You are not aborted because God has a plan in you to be a pastor, Amen. to be a servant of God. And that became one of my greatest motivations in serving God. That is one of, the, if not the main motivation for me to really pursue God's calling in my life because God did not allow me to be thrown out to the basin. Good looking baby is being thrown out to the basin now. Huh? Because God has a plan. But come to think of it, before I was born again, the devil is having a jolly good time. In my life. You know, whispering to me, end your life, you're good for nothing. Remember, your mom wants you to be in that basin. Want you to be crushed inside his, her womb. Such a waste. A very good baby being crushed in the womb. But you see, it's all start in our mind. If you think you cannot make it, if you think you're a loser, if you think that nothing will happen, if you think that I cannot reach it, then you cannot. That's why this verse tells us, Paul tells us, bring every thought into captivity that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Even if it's not according to the will of God, it is, even if it's not the promise of God, grab it and throw it away your mind. Hello? Don't even entertain it. Hello? Amen? It's one thing to be concerned. It's another thing to be worried and be affected by it. You know? And of course, our you know how imagine, imaginative our mind can be? Very imaginative. Now, when I say very imaginative, it works both ways. Bear with me. Human beings possess a very imaginative mind, positively and negatively. Negatively. So if you're good in doubting, just reverse it. Believe. Libre. May basihan pa. Why are you worried? Why are you doubtful? Why are you afraid? Because you think negative things might happen? Is, is it happening? Is it really happening? Don't even know? And pastor, you don't even also know if good things will happen. Well, choosing between the two, Would it be better to think positively yeah, than thinking negatively? Yeah. Controlling your mind to think positively? When you already had the basis of thinking positively. The Word of God. The Word of God. Yes, the Word of God. Amen. The promises of God. Amen. You know? So it all starts with our mind. That's why Paul said in Romans chapter 12, 1 and 2, let us renew our mind. If you can control your mind, control what you want to think and think positively. Because we cannot be an overcomer if we cannot overcome the things that we think. And through the years, bago tayo maborn again, ang isip natin, nabombahan ng lahat ng mga basura ng mundo. So we need to really delete, 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 delete. And reprogram our minds and fill it with the words of God and the promises of God. Because you can only overcome physically. You can only overcome in the physical world once you have overcome in your mind. Isip mo na. Pagsisimula lahat siya dito. Okay? Clear? Clear ba tayo sa mga kapatid? Clear. You know, so, so start it with your mind. Now, now, after, dapat mag-aano yan, dapat uh, orchestrated yan, dapat symphony yan, parang music. Your heart believes. Your mind is convinced. Now you